Hey guys, it's Jeff from Can here. How are you today? I hope you're having a great uh, Labor Day weekend. It's Sunday or Monday and you're getting ready to go back to work. I'm sure you're not in the mood to go back to work, but hey, at least you, you made a good good time for the three-day weekend. Um, basically today, we're going to make a very famous dish. It's actually the national dish of Thailand, uh, Pad Thai. It's a Thai dish. It's noodles. And what I noticed when I had that here and I was in Florida, as a matter of fact, I went to an authentic Thai restaurant. And they're so proud of their Pad Thai that they actually make it the right, the right way. And the right way is using a lot of sugar. So when we ordered Pad Thai for my family, when we tried the Pad Thai, it was so sweet. And we asked the guy, was there a mistake? He said, no, we love a lot of cane sugar in the Pad Thai. That's what makes the dish. Well, obviously in America, you know, they're not gonna make it that, that sweet because nobody will buy it. So they obviously trimmed off a lot of, a lot of the sugar. But I'm gonna show you how to make it, and it's really easy. And I just wanna let you know that we're using translucent noodles. So they come in the dry form. You're not gonna be able to get it fresh, right? Because it's very hard to get, and it's really a pain unless you make it the same day that you receive it. It's just really a bummer to work with. So you buy the dry translucent rice noodles. Soak it, then parboil it, boiling, and do it until it's al dente, which means it's not overcooked or undercooked. Drain it, add a little cold water to stop the cooking process because you don't want to overcook it. And then we have bean sprout. This is prepackaged bean sprout. This is, the color is totally uh, opaque, beautiful. And there's no liquid on the bottom, so this is very fresh, all right? So you may be able to buy that at your local market. And uh, it's, it's one of the main ingredients of Pad Thai. Along with that, we have three stalks of chopped scallion. We'll be adding two eggs. We have shrimp. So we leave, to leave the tail on, take off the shell, and basically it's more for cosmetic purposes, the little tail, to make it look nice. And then the sauce is three basic sauces. We have three crabs brand fish sauce. Now, you may say, well, we can get any kind of fish sauce, but if you go to an Asian market, there's gonna be aisles and aisles of sauces all over the place. And so you don't even know what to buy. It has varying prices, quality. Three brands, three crabs brand fish sauce is the, is the one I've been using. It's been good, it's high quality. You may pay a little bit more, but you're gonna get it in, the, in a flavor. Right. Along with that, you're going to have to have a sour. And we have tamarind sauce. Don't buy the tamarind in the pod. Buy the sauce. It's already been, um, pod's been broken, it's been crushed and squeezed. So you got the sauce. So that gives it a sour flavor. So you have a salty, the fish sauce, and then you're going to have a sour, which will complement each other. Then you're going to have sugar. Now, instead of adding brown sugar or cane sugar, I mean, I'm gonna use Splenda monk fruit. And this can be located in the um, baking aisle of your local supermarket. And it's pretty hot right now. So if you have Nutri aspartame, Nutri sweet, sweet and low, it's all bad for you, okay? It's all processed and it's just not healthy for you. But monk fruit is good for you. Take it from the chef who can. Now there are a couple of articles about monk fruit, Splenda, uh, Stevia, but I don't even know why they're, they're criticizing you because it's a natural sweetener, which is good for you. The other item is that when we stir fry, we're gonna use virgin olive oil. I'm using Redner's. If you see a virgin olive oil on the label and it says virgin olive oil processed, you don't wanna buy it. You just wanna buy virgin olive oil, okay? And as far as canola oil, as far as corn oil, vegetable oil, salad oil, peanut oil, those are all processed and any oil that's processed is bad for you. So I just want to let you know that I use virgin olive oil. So you may say, well, virgin olive oil may have a high smoke point. You're right, but as we stir fry, we're not gonna leave it exposed to the heat for so long. So we don't have to worry about the smoking, right? We're just using that oil to heat up, all right? So basically that is that, and I want to show you that we'll be adding some fresh garlic. 
So, they have it now, ShopRite. Elephant garlic. And it's bigger, so it's, it can sell better. And big, but it has more milder taste. Elephant garlic versus the regular traditional garlic, okay? And so, what we want to do is, we just want to smash the garlic. And I'll show you how we do that. Now, I know many of you probably have the garlic press. All right. And I don't know how they were able to sell that, but obviously they did. This is my garlic press. Put it on a chopping board, smash it, and that's it. Whereas on the uh, garlic press, you got to make sure the garlic's out of the holes. And you have to use strength to try to squeeze it through those holes, but I just smash it, all right? And that's my garlic press. All right, so what I'm gonna do is explain a little bit about my tools, right? We're gonna use a high carbon steel wok, right? And basically, high carbon steel wok is sort of like the uh, cast island skillet. You have to season it. And every time you use it, you always have to season it. Don't use detergent. Just season it with a little oil, wipe it off, rinse it, whatever. And that's about it. And basically, keep on doing it when you first buy it. But after you do that, just scrape out all the stuff, heat it up, add a little oil, season all the sides, and you're going to get your own uh, natural non-stick surface. All right? Now, obviously, on TV, they're selling all these non-stick surfaces. It's still sprayed on. And so what happens is as you cook, some of that spray comes off and you ingest it and it doesn't leave your body. So it's it's very bad for you, right? So if you use a non-stick, that's all you have, I would say use it at medium heat. My carbon steel I can use it at a high heat, okay? So we're gonna set this on high. This is my spatula, all right? So we're gonna wait until the wok gets hot then we'll add about a quarter cup of virgin olive oil, okay? Because we're dealing with noodles. So whenever you deal with noodles, it's always going to stick together. So, you know, a little bit more than usual of the oil that you use will help it prevent it from sticking together and prevent it from sticking to the wok, okay? So from here on, I'll show you exactly how it's done, all right? All right, so we're heating up the wok. So once the wok gets hot, then we'll add the oil. So we're gonna add about a quarter cup. Right? Then we'll add the garlic. All right. And while we're waiting for the garlic to fuse with the oil, we'll break the two eggs. We don't want the garlic to burn, okay? So we'll just flip it around. Okay. Then we'll add the egg. Now we'll add about, let's say, two tablespoons of tamarind. Okay. Good. Good. This is the salad. Well, no, four. Then, We'll add about two tablespoons of fish oil, as well as two tablespoons of sugar. You want to balance the salty with the sweet and the sour. Okay.
So we'll saute it a little bit. So we may want to add a little color. Some places add a little bit of color, some places don't. But we'll add a little bit of color. We'll add a little bit of paprika. Okay? Add a little bit more if you want. Now we will add the noodles. Okay. So basically, we'll try to break it up. By breaking it up, by stirring it, prevents us from breaking up the noodles. You know, saute it. Now, we're considering that we're on a uh, butane stove, if it ain't so bad, we'll add the scallion and the shrimp. And we'll mix it together. Always, always continue to mix. That will spread the heat onto the shrimp and you'll get even cooking. That's what you want. Okay. Okay, we got peanuts. Essential for pasta. Good. We may want to add a little bit of uh, salt to it to really get that color out a little bit. And we'll add a little bit more oil. So although I said quarter cup of oil, you may want to add a little bit more just to prevent that sticking. Trim spine, color comes out to be a little bit better. Now we'll throw in the bean sprout. And we use about a half pack. Okay. And we'll just keep on sauteing it. And the heat of the noodles will cook the bean sprout. You don't want to overcook bean sprouts because then it'd be kind of like mushy. You want just right al dente. Okay? Sounds kind of crazy, right? Having al dente in Chinese cooking, but you know what? It does work. Alright? So we'll keep on sauteing it. Now we'll take a little taste of it. Make sure everything's okay. We have to add anything. Mm. Mm. So we may have to add a little bit more tamarind sauce. So that basically is six tablespoons of tamarind sauce. Some fish sauce, and then we have to add sugar. So double dose because we're dealing with a little bit more noodles. Right. Obviously, this is what goes on in the kitchen, so you don't really see it. All you see is the final product. 
but they have to taste it to make sure everything is okay before you guys have it. Right. Now let's take a taste. You always have to taste. Mm, much better. Alright, keep on sauteing it. You look fine. Alright, well, maybe you should add a little bit of dark soy sauce. Always want to add a little color to make it more beautiful looking. In Chinese cooking, the more beautiful, the more aromatic the dish is, the more people get really hungry and want to eat. Right. Give that a nice brown color. And that's it. That's your pot thai. So let me shut it off. And let me also tell you about my book. During this time this summer, I wrote a book. It's the You Can Do It Asian Cookbook. This will make a great present gift for the holidays for the person that has everything. It comes with 25, uh, 25 recipes from all of Asia, whether it's Korea, Japan, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Chinese. All right, so I cover the spectrum, and these are all simple, easy recipes. And this book explains to you the why. Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to buy this? Where can I buy this? I will list a bunch of companies that you can actually go online and order it online. And if you're within their range, they'll deliver for you. Or if you have, if you're in a high population city, they may have an H Mart or a Great Wall supermarket, right? So you'll have a place to find the stuff rather than let you know that you need this ingredient and then you don't know where to have to buy it. So I explain the why. And basically, the way I speak is the way I write. So it's very simple to understand, easy. You'll really enjoy it, and it's well worth your money. So go on Amazon Books, go on the search on the Chef Who Can, or the You Can Do It Asian Cookbook by Chef Who Can, right? And while you're doing that, you might as well pick up a mug for the holidays too. Make it a, a do gift for somebody. It's a coffee mug. It says basically, I'm saying Chef Who Can, you can too. Once you make one of my recipes, you can say, I can too. So Chef Who Can, I can too. And we have my doggy mascot. He's a corgi, and he's right on the face of it. And he represents the company. So give it a shot. You have your gift. It's unusual. For the person that has everything, they'll love it if they love to cook. All right? So basically, I say... Aloha from the great state of Maryland to you. Have a great week. And let me take a bite of, of this good stuff. So we have a shrimp. Mmm, good. The noodles, perfect. Mm, perfect, al dente. So if you have any questions, email me, text me. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. But this is authentic. Authentic would require it to be even sweeter, but obviously we're not in Thailand, so this is just right. So there's a balance between salty, the fish sauce, and sweet, the sugar, there's a balance. Then you're adding sour, and then that will try to balance it with the salty and sweet, all right? And basically, make sure the noodles are al dente, because when you cook it further in the wok, adding bean sprouts and all the other vegetables, you don't want it to be 100% cooked or overcooked, because then it gets mushy, all right? So al dente is perfect, all right? So thank you very much. Any questions, Chef Who Can, this is going to make you enjoy takeout food so much better. You go to a restaurant right now, you go to takeout, it's around $18 for one dish. This will serve four people, three, three and a half people, okay? So you'll save money. Believe me, you'll save a lot of money. If it's $18, you probably only pay $8 to make this meal. That's it. So you're saving. Where takeout used to be the best place to go to beat, you know, inflation food out in the restaurants, now they have to keep up with the Joneses and they have to 
raise their prices because everybody else is raising prices with the manufacturer. So think about it. Come to Chef Lucan if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to help you and direct you in the right way. Okay? Thank you very much. Chef Lucan, you can too. Aloha from the great state of Maryland. Bye-bye.